In another part of the city, interesting instructions are being given over the telephone. Oh, look, Spinelli. You're clever with the paintbrush. You've done a swell job on that horse, Sagebrush. You've kept him looking like the real white star. Yeah. They were bred to have the same confirmation. He may not be able to run like him, but he sure looks like him. But, yeah, yeah, I know. I know it was difficult. But you're getting paid plenty. Now, here's what I want you to do. We're shipping White Star to a little track in the south. And I want you to disguise him so that no one will know. Oh, Danny, uh, where is the Blue Beetle flying tonight? Out to the racetrack. But there's no horse racing at night. No, but there's a horse moving. And the Blue Beetle is going to find out why. Well, be careful, Danny. I, uh, I inspected your blue chain armor and mask. Uh, it seems in perfect condition. Thanks, Doc. Uh, taking anything along besides your magic ray and blue beetle spotlight? Huh? Oh, just a little paint remover. Paint remover? Yes. I've got a hunch a little paint remover may come in handy to remove a disguise. I hope you're successful. So do I. Well, so long, Doc. The blue beetle is off to the racetrack. <laughs> Mitch, pull a horse van in here and park. Okay. I'll soft-foot it into the stables and see if Spinelli's finished with White Star. If he has, I'll give you the old hoot owl. Yeah? And what then? I'll come running with White Star and we'll lead him up into the truck. Okay. Now keep your motor running. As soon as we get him loaded, we'll high bail it out of here. I got you. Okay. Come on, we'll let the loading ramp down. You take the other side. Yeah. I got it. Now, ease her down. Ah, that's cut it. Now, remember to keep your motor running. Ah, don't worry. I've done this before. Okay. I'll be back as soon as I can. Easy. Easy, White Star. Easy. Soon you'll look like Sagebrush, the dope. He's a look like you, but he's a no run like you. Easy, boy. Easy. Yeah. A little more pain on the forehead. Then nobody's no you the white star. Everybody think you just a dog. The boss is to make a plenty money on you. Every time you race, you get other men. You look like other horse. How you come, Miss Benelli? Christy. As you frighten me. Is that you, Froggy? Yeah. I got the horse van down the road. Is White Star ready to go? Yes. How's he look? Move your lantern over this way. Say. That's a swell job. Nobody'd recognize him. You're an artist, Spinelli. Yes, Spinelli's a great artist. I am the... Shh! Douse the glim. Somebody's coming. Look. Look on the wall. Yeah. A spotlight for a large... The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Beat it, masquerader, before I drill you. Go ahead and shoot. Draw every stable boy and guard in the place here. Hey, all right, Froggy. Okay. What do you want? I want to cut in on this racket, or I'll expose you. Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't the boss in this racket. You have to see Gutcho. All right. Reach for the roof, boys. It's the law. Mike Manigan. The dumb copper. Yes, it's Officer Manigan, and he ain't so dumb. So, Blue Beetle, you want to chisel in on this racket, eh? You have sharp ears, Manigan. Listen, copper. If you're wise, you'll put up that gun and forget you ever saw us. The boss will pay plenty to keep this quiet. It's a gold mine. Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't prospecting for gold. I'm gunning for racketeers. Well, you ain't gonna get this one. Oh. And for you, copper. And this is for you, you. Oh. Ah, good work, Spinelli. Got the blue beetle with the lantern. Hey, look. Huh? Look, the lantern, she's a broke. She's a set fire to this straw. Hey, hey, what's going on in there? Fire, fire. Somebody turn in the alarm. Fire. All right. Here, Spinelli. Help me toss the blue beetle over into that stall. All right. <laughs> Yeah. That'll be the end of Mr. Blue Beetle. He'll bring up with the stable, I hope. Hey, what's about his office for a mannequin, huh? Load him on your back and bring him out to the van. We'll drop him off a bridge somewhere. Oh, he's a very heavy. Okay, okay, I'll take him. You lead White Star out. Mitch is waiting down the road with the motor on him. Come on, come on, make it snappy. Well, here we go. Blue 
Beetle certainly had a narrow escape that time. Yes. Spinelli hit me from behind with a lantern and knocked me unconscious. When I came to, I was in a water tank next to what had been White Star's store. The whole place was ablaze. But how did you escape burning to death? The asbestos lining you made for my Blue Beetle armor saved me. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. I made it so if some racketeer happened to get a hold of your electric ray gun, he couldn't burn you to death in your Blue Beetle armor. That's right. Oh, oh by the way, uh, what became of Mannigan? Didn't you say he was there? Yes, but a thug named Froggy knocked him out. I didn't see anything of him afterward. Did you see the morning paper? No. What did they have to say about the fire? Uh, well, here, uh, read it. Oh. Fire caused considerable damage to stables at Parkingham Racetrack last night. Several horses were burned. First, it was thought White Star had been burned. But later, the sensational stakes winner was found in one of the stables, not touched by the fire. He is booked to run in the Alice Whiteman Memorial Stakes on Saturday. Say, something's rotten somewhere. Why, what do you mean? Well, White Star was in the part of the stables that burned last night, but he was disguised by a coat of paint. I caught one of the crooks at work. But it says they're in the paper. No, but... but if those crooks can disguise one horse, they can disguise another. Well, what are you going to do? Run out and have a look at this White Star. Uh, just a minute, Danny. I I'll see who's out front in the store. Oh, hello, Doc. Is Danny here? Yes, yes, he he's in the back. My, my, there, Mike, you have quite a cut on your chin. Yeah, sure. Uh, a horse kicked me last night. Hello, Mike. What's this about a horse kicking you? Oh, hello, Danny. Uh, yes. You see, I was investigating this White Star case, and I got kicked by a horse. Oh, that's too bad. Say, but you're just in time. I'm going out to the track myself. Why don't you come along? Maybe you can find the uh, horse that kicked you and arrest him. Uh, yeah, th that's a good idea. Uh, come on, now, let's go. I got the car outside. Goodbye, Doc. If I find out what I expect to find, the Blue Beetle will fly again tonight. Uh, Danny, uh, would you like to try out the portable television set? It's ready for a test. Oh, that's great. I'll pick it up when I come back for my Blue Beetle chain armor and mask. Well, goodbye. Goodbye and good luck. Arrangements have been made, gentlemen. Sagebrush, disguised as White Star, will race in the Whiteman Memorial on Saturday and lose. Uh, what about the real White Star? He'll run at Shadyside, disguised as Sagebrush, and win. We'll get long odds on him and clean up. Who's riding here on Saturday? Oh, a new jockey. It's his first big race. He'll think he's riding on the real White Star. Uh, what's that humming sound? Mm, maybe the electric fan in the other room. And what about Jessup? Doesn't he suspect that He's out on bail. But he'll be kept away from the racetrack. If he opens his mouth about anything, he'll get what we gave Winston. Well, I hope your scheme works. We've invested plenty, and we expect to realize on our investment. Don't worry, gentlemen. Your investment is safe. You've already cleaned up plenty on yesterday's race, and you'll make a fortune if you let me run things. Well, what about the policeman and the blue beetle that discovered Spinelli and uh, uh, Froggy, as you call them, at work? They've been disposed of. Their mouths have been closed forever. What's that noise? The blue beetle. Hey, come to life. Yes. Too bad Buddy Winston can't be brought back to life. Murderers. This time I'll make sure of you, you blue beetle. Go ahead and shoot, Gottschalk. But first, look at this little black box. I'm not interested in little black boxes. You're in my way and Every I'm... action, every word you say is being registered in this portable television set. That was the sound I heard. Yes, like an electric fan. And you were... Standing behind the curtains, televising everything that took place here. The police! Yes, the police. They've been receiving everything I've picked up here. The case is complete, gentlemen, with every television set owner in the city as added witnesses. The Blue Beetle was in with these crooks, eh? Put the braces on them, boys. And to make doubly sure of the Blue Beetle, I'll handcuff him, Mike. Oh. Sorry to hurt you, Manigan, but the Blue Beetle has to keep his hands free. Goodbye, gentlemen. It'll be a long time before you see another horse race. I can laugh now, Danny, when I think how you bluffed those crooks. Uh, but at the time, I was worried. <laughs> yes. If I'd known you'd left a tube out of the portable television set, 
Might have had to use different methods. Uh, luckily, the crooks didn't know it. They were so surprised and frightened, they made a full confession when Mannigan and the boys got them down to headquarters. Well, the next time, I- I'll make a closer check. I'd have never forgiven myself if harm had come to you. Oh, forget it, Doc. You're the best friend a fellow could have. I don't know what I'd have done without your help. Oh, you'd have come through successfully just the same. Remember, thoroughbreds always come through. And so another crooked racket was smashed by the Blue Beetle. What new assignments will the Blue Beetle set for himself in his crusade against crime? This question will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. Copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in. <laughs> <laughs>